Hello everybody, this is Mateo, and we are going through the Cavern of Earth. Uh, hopefully we can solve Melman's, uh, crappy f soil problem, I guess, I don't know. Well, either way, we have Minotaurs here, which are basic enemies. Kinda tough, hit kind of hard. Uh, bit of HP, but they can get killed in one turn usually, especially when you have a party like mine. Now, if you go further down that hallway, or maybe as far as I went, you will start running into enemies, uh, fixed encounters with an enemy called the Hill Gigas, which are rather powerful, uh, so you want to be careful in fighting them. Make sure you're rather healed up. And they do a ton of damage, have quite a bit of HP, and it's really bad when you fight them in groups, because it can get kind of difficult. I apparently accidentally cut out all the battles with them rather than just all but one, so we won't see them here. But they're there, they're a fixed account and encounter right there. And we're going to see their cousins later on. And here we have an Earth Elemental, which is the um, guardian of this chest right here. Have I explained guardians? I think so. Yeah, I did in the last part, okay. So yeah, he was guarding that chest with a whole bunch of gill. And he's basically going to be guarding all of the chests that are guarded, if that makes sense. And we're going to do some on-screen healing, yeah! Awesome, you get to see a bunch of sparkles float around my characters. Yeah, you might want to get used to seeing this a lot. Eventually, I do it off screen sometimes, but when it's just like minimal stuff like that, then I usually just keep it on because I don't want to like cut it out or whatever. But anyways, we can go in here, grab two more treasures, an antidote, and 795 gil. Now, this floor, for whatever reason, I couldn't find the way out of it for a while. Uh, basically the downstairs. I couldn't find it for whatever reason. And then, it, I was even going in like the right direction for a minute, but then I thought, oh no, I should turn around, this isn't the right way. And I just continued on, and that really was the right way. So, going to cut out most of my wandering after getting this treasure. And cutting out my wandering there, and now I can go over here, and there's the stairs. Okay, Cavern of Earth B2. We have a whole bunch of bats here. So, um, they really don't do anything, they just kind of get in the way. You could talk to them and they'll go like, key, key, or something like that, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to reference Zelda again, like the tombstone did in Alfheim. Speaking of Zelda, like, a cup, like, mmm, about... Almost an hour ago, I finally beat, um, well not really finally, it only took me like a little more than a week, but I beat um, Ocarina of Time, which is good. It was a very fun game. Okay, so Coral Sword really seems to only be an upgrade for the Thief, so give it to him. It will do extra damage to aquatic foes, but other than the guys in the ocean, which are really weak to begin with, we really aren't going to see that many aquatic foes, and by the time that we do, we'll have much better stuff anyways, so it's really not all that helpful. Just use it for the base attack power, and sell it off once you get something better, and get a bunch of gill. Because those swords that are like super effective basically against certain types of monsters, do sell for a lot of money. You could buy a spell or two with that um, money, and by that I mean the higher up spells that we're learning right about now. And here we have another battle against the Whites. They are basically powered up versions of the Ghasts. But not that powered up because apparently even the Black Mage can kill it in one physical attack. So, oh well. Wow, the Black Mage has a ton of MP already. I could be using a spell for every battle, but most of the time I'm just going to attack, 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 attack. Uh, because most of the enemies will just die in one turn anyways. Really the only time that I'm going to use spells is during boss battles and, and large groups of enemies that are really dangerous, such as these guys. Now they only have about 30 HP, but what's really bad about them is that when they physically attack you, they could possibly stone your character. Uh, the stone status basically counts as death, so both my warrior and my thief are basically dead. And if all four of your characters are hit with stone, then game over, man. It's kind of like instant death, only it can be cured with a gold needle, which I'm going to do after this. And we just got one, which is good. But 
they're really annoying enemies, really. Kind of cheap with their uh, whole stoning tactics. Oh, hello there, Mr. Blue Bat. We didn't see you earlier. Just be careful with them. Kill them quickly. Use a spell if you run into a really large group with, of them. Okay, so apparently this this bat is really a vampire. Oh, we shall see about that. Okay, so this guy is actually really easy, so I'm not going to buff up at all. I'm just going to use some spells. But, I mean, other than that, not going to buff up like I normally would with boss battles. Like, use haste and temper and that kind of stuff. I mean, look at that. He went down very, very quickly. Well, actually, later on in the game, we'll actually start running into the vampires as a regular enemy. So he's kind of like the Pisca Demons in that sense, but he's like not just a guardian that we happen to fight earlier in the game than we should be fighting it. He just happens to be there. And we got the uh, Star Ruby, I think? Something like that? Well, that's what we needed to come here for. And as I was walking out of this place, I met up with the trolls. And they're flaming me. Ow, the warrior took six damage from the flaming. Would have been awesome if I was... If I had used, like, fire on them so that I could flame them back. But I didn't think about it at the time. The Black Mage didn't even get his turn, so oh well. And there we go. We are now out of the Cavern of Earth. And we are now heading over up and then to the west, I believe, to use that Star Ruby, which we just got. Uh, especially in the early game, the first half or so, a lot of your progress is going to be continued by getting key items that you can use to open up different areas later on. I mean, we got the Star Ruby, we had that whole item quest. So really, at least for now, this is kind of going to be a giant fetch quest of a game. But I mean, it was NES, they really couldn't do much else. We also found the Lesser Tigers there, not that bad. Okay, so now that we have the Star Ruby, we can give it to this giant stone golem guy. And um, he will om nom nom. And I, I don't even know. Well, there goes one priceless gem from the earth, and he will slowly walk away, and then magically disappear. And there we go, we've opened up the way. So now we can get to a couple other places here, and also pick up some treasure as well. We got a great axe, which is an upgrade for the warrior, um, some gill, and the mithril helm. So warrior stuff, and a mithril, and gill. Now the great a- great. I sound like that. One character from Blazing Saddles. Yeah, that's the movie. Okay, but the Great Axe. Uh, axes are more powerful than swords. However, they have less accuracy. It usually isn't that bad in the lack of ac accuracy, though. But then also, some of the strongest weapons in the games are swords. So y your warrior will probably end up with a sword eventually. And now down here, we have the Sage's Cave, which is a really small area. Check his pots for any loot that we can take from him. Apparently not. Whoever the Sage is, he must not be that important. I mean, he's living in this little house and nothing's really going on. Sada. Okay, yes, we did defeat the vampire. Oh, that's not good. But he will give us the Earth Rod. And if you remember that stone slab that we saw about like three or four, maybe even five minutes ago, well, that's where we got to go. And we got to use a star rod on that. So I'm basically going to uh, meet you back at there, at the stone slab. So uh, let me just point out to, yes, I am indeed going to the earth cave. There we are. Okay, so here we go, going to go ahead and use that Earth Rod that we got from Sada the Sage, and we have even more Cavern of Earth. Uh, there's not too much more to this place, only two more floors, including this one, I believe. However, we do have a whole bunch of treasure, a weak little staff, a whole bunch of gill, um, more gill, and in, if you step on that tile, you run into a battle with a Sphinx. It is a guardian for these chests. Uh, not really that bad. You're going to be meeting up with it regularly later on. But, I mean, I think it might have an attack called Poison Darts, or that might be one of his cousins, which will hit all four of your party members and maybe do some damage and possibly poison. 
So there's that, but really not all too bad, especially if they just do a regular attack. And you have 99 antidotes like I do, or around that number. Okay, so, oh, big cut there. Oops, oh well. Doesn't really matter, just more battles. I think I just teleported across this little mini room or whatever. But here we have a bit of a maze of rooms. There are going to be quite a few floors like this in this game. It's not like it's randomly randomly generated, it's just a big maze of floors and stuff. So we just gotta kind of find our way through it, and, well, we'll eventually find the stairs. Let's try down here, there's something, there's a bat. Oh, hey, a door, maybe this is the right way? And here's a battle that I forgot to cut out. Um, oops. Uh, you now have to watch me get paralyzed by a million whites and ghasts. And by a million, I mean, like, three, except it used to be four when I started that sentence, and it used to be five when we started this battle, and now it's only two. And now it's only one. And now it's zero. Because again, for whatever reason, the Black Mage is able to kill them off in one hit. You wouldn't expect the Black Mage to be doing that much damage in order to kill an enemy. Especially a recent enemy. I mean, like, if I used it on... If you were at this point in the game and you used, uh... You had the Black Mage attack something like a Goblin, then yeah, that would make sense if you were to kill it because the Goblin is really, really weak. But him being able to kill a recent enemy with a physical attack doesn't make as much sense. Also, you might have noticed that my levels are actually different, even though, like, at the very first part... <coughs> ah, excuse me. Uh, well, first off, here we have Ochre Jellies attack them. They're not like the green slimes that we first met up with. So you can just do regular damage to them with physical attacks. See right there. But, um, like I was saying, my character's levels are different because, uh, Baron and Wedge got hit by, um, the stone status, so they didn't get experience from that battle, so they're going to be a little bit different, but not that much, and it's going to happen, I mean, you can't, like, it's kind of difficult to do a no-death run, especially when you have things like cockatrices stoning you and stuff like that. But here we have the real cause of the problem, the Lich. Ratchet the Lich, Lich King? Nah, no. He is just Lich Fiend of Earth. And here we go. Our first battle against the Fiend. And I like this um, battle music, by the way. Let's go ahead and use haste on our two fighters. Well, our warrior and our thief, rather. Our physical attackers, I guess you'd call them. Although the Red Mage can physical attack. he I feel like he's better for buffing at this point. So now that we have haste on both of them, they're going to be doing more hits and slightly more damage. Now, I could use Temper on them, but this guy doesn't have enough HP to really warrant using that. So I'm not going to bother for now. And you see, with the Lich using a multi-targeting spell like that, now would have been a great time if I had had Healara or Heal, or he more likely Healara. If I just had, like, a Heal spell. So I never end up getting a Heal spell until maybe much later on. But still, I mean... Like, it would have been very helpful for now, so I can't recommend enough. Like, if you're following my setup, uh, don't follow it completely. Make sure you get a heal spell. Pre preferably, preferably a more powerful one. Okay, so I think I'm curing here. If the red mage, they're attacking, doing about 100 each. Uh, Thief's still doing a little bit less, but that's because he's not a warrior. Warrior does the most damage ever, at least when it comes to physical attacks. Fyraga, just because it's your most powerful spell at this point, doing mo a bulk of the damage, and down goes the Lich. He also counts as an undead enemy, so if you have Dia or Diara, or maybe Diaga, I don't know if you can have that at this point, but if you have it, uh, go ahead and use that too, it'll damage him. But here we have our crystal, we have defeated the Lich, and we can, well, we can make the first crystal shine again. So now, we are now a fourth of the way done with saving the world, basically. Which is good, because, well, it's only part five, really. We're going through this rather quickly, actually. But, if you see that thing in the back, it's actually Teleporter out of here. I didn't notice that the first time that I played this game. So I walked out every single time. Oh well. And also, if you remember that cave that was in between the Chaos Shrine and Cornelia, uh, that was in that, that thing right there that we just saw took place in that cave 
That is a bonus dungeon, but we'll do that much, much later. 